This video is about geographic maps. Now, maps are a, a type of chart in Spider Impact, but we're giving maps their own video because it's a little bit different beast than the other chart types, and you'll see what I mean. So here we are in the chart section. To create a new map, click New Chart, and here's all the different chart types you can choose. Uh, we are going to choose Filled Map under Geographic. And just like all chart types, there's dummy data, example data, loaded into your chart when you first create it. And therefore, you don't have to wire it up and spend all the time uh, putting your geographic data into Spider Impact just to see what the charts can do. So let's see how far we can get with just example data. We're going to view the map. Um, this is all dummy data, but you can see Canada has 19.1 thousand, United States has 17.3 thousand, Brazil's at 5 thousand. It's got a heat map style coloring so that you know the, the lower values are yellowish, or you know, light yellow, dark purple for the higher values. If you want to see details on something, you click it and it smoothly zooms in. If you want to click on United States, you'll see Alaska and Hawaii kind of slide into their positions. And that's the general idea of maps in Spider Impact is you hover over something to see what a value is and you click on it and you drill in for more information. So let's see what other options we've got here. So uh, you can set the colors. For color scheme, there's a lot of you know, lighter version of a color to a really dark version of the color. Um, you know, higher values is darker, but you can flip that so that higher values are lower, or darker values are lower rather. Um, we're going to do a color style, um, a scoring color style. So it's like red, yellow, green. Red is low, green is high. And you can see what that looks like. So other configuration options we've got. We can set, um, let's do map level. So in our example data, we don't have state or province or lower. We don't have any city data, right? It's only at the country level. But what we can do is we can turn on continent. And this is what that looks like. And so it's going to aggregate all of the data to the continent level. And we can say, oh, Africa's got you know, just shy of a million of whatever this is. And we can click on it. And it zooms in. And you can see the detail at the country level now, because we turned on continent. And now we can click on that. And had we you know, lower state or province level or city data or postal code or whatever, we could further keep zooming in and zooming in and zooming in. So that is uh, how charts work. One last thing. There is a. 2D level, 2D Earth is on by default. We can switch that to 3D Earth, and that's pretty neat. It's an automatically rotating uh, globe that spins, and you can grab it. And if you want to see details, you can click on it. It unwraps, and further zoom in. Pretty neat stuff. So that is uh, the gener that's the, the basics of, of how maps work uh, in Spider Impact. So let's see what this looks like with real data. Uh, we're going to go to uh, the data set section. Maps work with geographic data and only geographic data because you have to know where to put your number on the map, right? We're going to create a new data set, and it's going to be, I've got some example data here. Here's airports. Uh, Every single airport in the world I found a data set for, it's got its name, its country, and its altitude. And there are a lot of them. There are just shy of 8,000 airports according to this data set. So let's build it. We're going to upload a file. Oh, that. Call this Airports 2. All right. And this is looking good for data. No transformations. These are the columns we're going to create. And it's going to take a minute or two for this thing to build. Oh, quicker than I thought. So uh, airports are ready to go. We've got a data set. We can say um, check out country. United States has the most airports. Uh, it's 20% of the airports according to this data set with 1,500. Canada has 430, Australia 334, et cetera. OK, so this is great. This, this is a text value. You can see how it's broken down by, by country. We cannot map this yet. What we have to do is we have to turn this into a geographic field. So we're going to edit the data set. And we are going to go to this country. You see it's a text field. 
Oh, no, it's not. It's a geographic field. And what is it? Country, continent, all this stuff, it's a country. All right, now we're in business. So now we're going to go to explore this thing. And actually, I think there, now it's done building. So I'm going to click on country. Now look at this. Now it treats the data a little bit differently because it's geographic. Now, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it breaks things down into the continent level. And I can click on Europe. And it breaks things down. OK, these are the countries within Europe. And that's the lowest level it's, I've got with my airport data. So now we've got geographic data. It knows where these different countries fit in the globe. Now we can uh, bring this thing to life. So let's go back to the charts section. And edit our chart. Let's give it some data. Set data source. Got a brand new beautiful airports two data set. And what field do we want? We'll prop we could do altitude. That's gonna look weird. We're gonna do number of records. Look at this. Um, I don't think this is scored data, so let's change the color to be darker versions of blue. That's gonna be actually giving things a better picture. So this is what it looks like. These are the airports. You can see here, Chad has six airports, Saudi Arabia has 45, United States has 1,500, Brazil has 264. Pretty neat. And again, if we want to turn on the different levels, we can turn on the continent, and we can see which continents have more airports. Click on Asia. Oh, great. These are the number of uh, Asian airports. Pretty cool. So that's, that is how you do uh, maps in, in Spider Impact. Now, you don't have to just do global data, right? You can have a, a lot of data sets you're going to deal with are going to be very specific and regional. So let me show you what that would look like. Um, you can do a data set like this. Uh, this is an example I've already built together. Uh, this is what it's or I've already put together. This is what it's based on. I've got a big old spreadsheet here with all of the solar projects in New York State in the last 10 years. And uh, you can see there are, well, let's see how many records there are. There are 12,000 records here, and there are a whole bunch of data about each solar project. You know, what's the reporting period, project number, city. This is, uh, everything's in the state of New York. Zip code, that's our magic number. We can do a lot of fun things with that. That's a US postal code. Uh, what's its sector, residential, program type, uh, solicitation, what's the electric utility, all this kind of great slice and dice kind of stuff. So what we've done here is we've put together, these are New York zip codes. And if you edit this dashboard, uh, first of all, you notice how the dashboard, uh, the, the chart is on a dashboard because uh, uh, maps are just like any other type of chart. You can put them on a dashboard and have them interact with everything else. So we're going to edit this chart. And notice how I've got a starting view of New York. I can actually do a starting view, and I've specifically ta uh, talked about New York. There's actually some data in here outside of New York. Um, so you can you could actually zoom out to the US level and, and because there's a couple of states involved in that, but we don't want to deal with that. We just want to deal with New York data. So I've chosen a specific starting level of New York. Okay. All of that aside, here's what that looks like in a dashboard. We're going to zoom in. You can apply filters. See, look at this. We've got a total of 116,000 solar projects um, with 5.1 billion, billion kilowatt hours. They spent 9.5 billion on it with 1.8 billion in incentives. But because this is a data set, well, you can mouse over this and say, oh, okay, look at that zip code. Zip code 14850 had 877 uh, uh, projects, all right? So we can say, all right, let's change the electric utility just to national grid. Isn't that neat? So all of these numbers automatically update because these are single value widgets. And you can, uh, all of the different, um, uh, the legend updates to reflect the new numbers. And you can see, okay, this is where for the national grid utility. Or if you want to say um, a specific solicitation or a specific contractor, right? There's so many contractors. Let's see what AU Solar is. Well, they only had one down here in Manhattan. Uh, I wonder what kind of data we're going to deal with here. This one had 18 projects. Again, most of them in Manhattan. But it's kind of neat, right? Because you can really dig in 
and see your data set. You know, is this a green jobs project? Well, just show me the green jobs data. Okay, that's what that looks like. And so uh, maps are one of many ways to interact and show your data on a dashboard. And that is maps in Spider Impact.